What a pot this is. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. What? Oh, what a match. What a battle. Devastation. I've never seen anything like that. We'll be talking about this dramatic hand for the next 50 years. Welcome to Paris when it sizzles as the World Poker Tour heats up the City of Light. The World Poker Tour is a series of international poker tournaments featuring the biggest games and largest payouts on the planet. Tonight, national pride is on the line as the World Poker Tour arrives at the exclusive Aviation Club de France for the prestigious Grand Prix de Paris. 96 of the most intense players have come from around the world, sinking almost $12,000 of their own money in hopes of a massive million-dollar return. After a grueling three-day melee, only six are left standing. Which one of these rivals will take home the title and the coveted $25,000 seat at the WPT Championship? A Vegas showdown worth millions. Join us for this international battle royale as these six contenders fight for pride, country, and cash. Now, down to the table where poker master Mike Sexton and Hollywood home game hero Vince Van Patten are ready to call the shots. Welcome, everyone. Here we are again, back in Paris at the fabulous Aviation Club de France. Well, I'll tell you, they can send us here every week as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> this is fantastic. You like it here, do you, Vince? Come on, what's not to like? Here we are in the heart of Paris, on the Champs-Élysées, enjoying watching the greatest poker players in the world go after big cash. I mean, and look at this room. This is something out of a big Hollywood movie set, something out of Casablanca. Well, it just goes to show you, the World Poker Tour is not just about high-stakes poker. It's about high-class poker as well. But, Vince, speaking of those stakes, this tournament had a prize pool of 960,000 euros, right. which is about $1,100,000. And these final six players are going to be vying for the bulk of that cash, a World Poker Tour title, and a coveted $25,000 entry into the World Poker Tour Championship event. Well, the players are about to begin. Let's go down and watch the international superstar poker players go for that first prize. Okay, starting out in sixth chip position today is Lee Salem. He was born in Baghdad. He lives in San Diego. He is a high-stakes cash game player. Lee starting out today with 39,900 chips and will be in seat one. All right, and in seat number six, George Padovoyasakis, the Greek tycoon, a very passionate poker player. He's got 77,500 worth of chips. In fourth chip position is Jamie Posner. He lives in London. He's only been playing poker for five years, but he plays in the highest stakes cash games in England. He's starting out today with 123,600 chips and will be in seat four. Okay, in seat number two, an American, Eric Lindgren. He's out of Las Vegas. He is a fantastic player and an athlete. He's got 123,700 worth of chips. Starting out in second chip position is Jan Boubli. He's from Paris. His nickname, Vince, is Le Grand. That means the best, as many here consider him the top tournament player in all of France. Jan is starting out today with 233,100 chips and is in seat five. Okay, and our chip leader at this point, David Benjamin, also from Paris. He used to be a pool hustler, got into this tournament through a satellite, and he is dominating this field now with 366,000. So here we go. They're about to shuffle up and deal. Let's go down to the felt. You all, we're pleased to have you here tonight. It's the first time I get to say this, but shuffle up and deal. That lovely lady calling the action here in Paris is Isabelle Mercier. And the first hand is underway. The first one to act will be the American Lee Salem in seat number one. Let's see what he's got. Well, he's got a queen jack of diamonds, Mike. And he's going to play the first pot here, Vince. He raises it up and makes it 9,000 to go on hand one. Now look at this, sitting right next to him. Eric Lindgren has picked up ace-jack of hearts. A very strong hand also. What'd you start with today? 39. 39? Yeah. He says, what did you start with today? Meaning, he might just set him all in right here. Now look at this, he wants him to talk. He wanted to find out a tell, perhaps, on him. Remember, this is Eric's first trip to Europe, let alone playing a poker tournament over oh, look here. At this. this is shocking. He's well, folding the hand. Well, Vance, as you would say, in tennis, he wants to volley a little while before he gets it all in here, so he's going to be a little conservative early. David's out. Jamie Potion's going out. 
Jan Bubli has picked up ace queen, Mike. Yes, he has. And it looks to me like he's going to raise it here, Vince. He's going to re raise Lee on hand one. Well, this is making Eric look like a genius. He folded his ace jack. He does. He makes it 30,000 to go. Now, this will virtually set Lee all in if he plays this pot. George going out with 10 4. And Lee opts to fold also. Quickly fold. Jan Bubli is going to take the first pot here. Well, that's on the World Poker Tour, the name of the game is No Limit Texas Hold'em. Otherwise known here in France as Give Me Your Money. It's a game that takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. Yeah, and a second to blow it all. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then five community cards are placed face up on the table. Each player combines his two down cards with the community cards to make his best five card poker hand. Betting is what this game is really all about. Now you get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. Now in poker this is called the flop. You bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card or the turn card on the table. Another round of betting follows. Then the last card called the river card is turned up on the table. There's a final round of betting. You turn up your cards, you see who wins. Well, Vince, the players are anting $400 and blinds are $1,500 and $3,000. And as you know, the blinds are the two bets that players to the left of the dealer button, the little white hockey puck on the table, have to put in the pot before the cards are dealt. Here we go. Second hand underway. It's going to be on Jamie Posner from England. To make a decision first, he's got Jack Deuce in his hand. He folds. Jamie folds. Comes Jean Boubli again. Picked up an ace jack off suit here, Vince. And he's going to raise it. He comes in for 7,000. Georges going out with a 47. But look, at least Salem's got a real hand. He's got a pair of queens. He's going to raise it, Mike. I'm all in. He says, I'm all in. There you go, Lee. He's playing back at the guy that played back at him the last pot. And Lee says you Eric's out. David folds. Right back to Jan. Now, it's only about 17,000, 18,000 more to Jan. He has plenty of chips. Lee Salem picking up the queens. Can he make them work? The dentist is studying the x-ray. 24,800. Is he going to see any cavities here, perhaps? Well, there's 40,000 in the pot or so. So he's getting a good price on his money, and he's going to call. Come on in. Well, he can afford to do it. I think he's supposed to call in this spot with Ace Jack. And we're going to flip over the cards, Mike. We're going to see what they got because a one player is all in. And here goes Lee holding his breath. He's got two queens. He's up against the Ace Jack. Ace Jack for And Jan looks like the insurance company didn't pay him. Here we go with the flop. Flop is king A3, but all diamonds. Now notice that Jan has the ace of diamonds, so a diamond or an ace is what he's going to need to win this pot. Lee's still in front, though. Here comes 4th Street. A deuce of spade. Okay, now I need a deuce of heart now. Look at Lee. He nodded. He got by one corner. He's got to sweat this out, though. He's got to get by one more turn here. One card, Lee. Hang in there. The five of hearts. And he does hang in there. Lee has done it. Lee Salem. Well done. The queen's hey. holding up. And he knows. He holds his it breath. It never comes easy. <laughs> it never comes easy, he says. Gosh, we know that feeling, don't we, Mike? You know, the diamonds had to come up, so he had to dodge all those cards as well as an ace. He did it, though, and he doubles up. Wow. Can I cash out now? Lee Salem from the U.S.? <laughs> Lee Salem, otherwise known as the Baghdad Bluffer. He is from Baghdad, now living in San Diego. My name is Lee Salem. I was born in Baghdad. The advantage that I have, I think I've been in big money before, so it doesn't make me nervous. Far spoken. It's a combination of art, experience, and uh, mathematics. Well, Mike, let's talk about this aviation club. This is a very elegant room. 
but it only allows 30 or 40 people. But outside in the rest of the casino, they are packed to the rafters. Well, you're right, Vince. Several hundred people out there cheering these French guys on. Back to the action in the land of James Bond. It's going to be on the young Englishman, Jamie Posner, to act first. This kid was an investment banker. He's been playing poker for only five years, Mike. And already he plays in the highest games in England. Wonder if we can call him Jamie Bond Posner. Hmm. Hey, there you go. Hey, looks a little bit like Bond. Look. Now you're stretching. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Jamie's looking at King Queen this time, and he's not going to call. Yawn is going out. Jamie, uh, pass. George has a six ace of clubs, and he's going to call this. George calls. Lee called on the button. Back to Eric. Well. Eric called in the small blind, so three guys limped in. And now it's on David Benjamin, who is a king jack of clubs. All in. Look at this, he's going all in. And David Benjamin moved all in on all three of these guys. Takes a lot of guts here. What a play by David right here. Well, you know, George doesn't realize, but if he does make this call, he's a big favorite. He has a six of clubs. He'd be up against the king jack of clubs. Does George want to gamble here for all his money? Goes to show you it's all psychology and poker. <laughs> if he plays and loses this pot, he's gone. Hadios over the rail. I'll tell you one thing, with a WPT cam, we get to look at their cards. These guys do not know what the other ones are playing, obviously. He's yeah. going to throw this one away. And he folds. <laughs> George lays down the A6. What an aggressive play by the Frenchman there. Lee's going out. Eric's going out. Do seven. Do seven. David picks up the pot. You know, they, they changed the game. We're playing Holden now. <laughs> He's been playing deuce to seven the last four days. Sometimes it's good. That I get <laughs> well played by David Benjamin, a former pool, I really shouldn't say it, but I'll say it, a pool hustler. <laughs> Spent a lot of time in the back rooms hey. of pool halls. And now he's playing poker. He's fun to watch. My name is David Benjamin. I'm from south of France. I do what I really want to do. I like competition. I like to gamble. And I like to travel. I have everything at the same time playing poker. So I'm just a happy man. I'm David Benjamin having a good time leading the table right now. More World Poker Tour action coming up from the exclusive Aviation Club in Paris, France. Stay tuned. We play because poker's not a scratch-off ticket, a half-court jumper, or a knock on wood. It's no game of luck, poker. It's a game of patience and well-timed aggression. We know when we play, a little luck helps. But luck can't explain why final tables have so many familiar faces. We play at FullTillPoker.com. This is the World Poker Tour, and we have exclusive access inside the Aviation Club de France. Vince, I got to tell you, I really like the way the guy from France is playing. David's got to be feeling very happy, smiling. He's getting very chatty. He's getting all the chips right now. He is king. <laughs> He's trying to put all of them under the guillotine right now, too, Vince. Okay, back in the action. And now it's going to be on Jan Boubli to act first. Johan Bobli has a 10-8. He's not going to call it. Georges with a jack-9. Not going to play. I'm all in. Lee quickly says all in. He's got two threes. He's moved all in. 43, 200. And I don't blame him with his 42,000 in chips. Eric's got an ace-four. Ace-four suited of spades. And he folds. But look at this. David Benjamin picked up two queens. Oh, he's got a monster. David calls. He's going to call. 
Jamie Folds. Oh, again? The Queens again. And look at Lee is sick. Well, Lee knows he's in big trouble here. And you finally come up with a hand, and you have to have someone come up with a, a huge hand against you. You always wake up with the Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, David Benjamin or Chip Leader is a big favorite to knock out the American Lee Salem. Lee's going to have to get very lucky to stay alive in this tournament thanks. right now. Either way. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Either way. He understood that you got to make a move while you still got chips. Here comes the flop, Mike. Close. Oh, oh, it's a disaster. The queen comes off for three queens. Now, Lee's not totally dead. He can catch two runners to make a straight, but he is a monster underdog right now. Here comes fourth street. It's an ace. It's over. All right. Good luck, everybody. Uh, a true gentleman, Lee Salem. Yep. He gets up. He shakes everybody's hands. I don't fault him for moving in with the two threes there. He was just unlucky to run into a big hand there. Well, you could tell he's devastated by that, and he's a sixth-place finisher. And now he's going to have to take that walk down the shops, they say, looking for crepes. Well, he's got 35,700 euros to walk with, Vince. That's a little bit over 40,000. So it's bad. not all bad. Tough defeat, but a great effort here to finish sixth in this tournament. Well, we're down to five now, Vince. One of the Americans is gone. And these guys got to love it. They've already eliminated one of their cohorts. The price of poker is going up a little bit here. Not very much, actually. And he's increased to 500. The blinds are now 2,000 and 4,000. Back to the action. It's on David Benjamin. He throws away a 9-8 in first position. It's on Jamie Posner now, who's got a king-10, Mike. Look at him rubbing his hands there, Vince. Cracking his knuckles. What's up, Jamie? Young Englishman. It looks like he's faced with a decision for all his chips the way he's rubbing his knuckles there, and he can get away for nothing. He's not going to play. Jan Bubli going out. Uh, George at this point has a 10-8. He's already invested in the pot. And Eric and George are both going to check it out. So there's going to be two-way action here. Battle of the blinds. Here comes the flop. Flop is 8-7-5. Now George has flopped the top pair here. Yes, he has. It's on him to bet. But look, Eric's got the open-ended straight draw. What's George going to do? Top pair with a 10 kicker. He checks. He checks. George checks. Now look at this. Eric is going to bet the open-ended straight draw. A lot of players will take a free card there. Eric is going to try to win the pot right here with a 6 and a 3. Back on George. The Greek tycoon. I'm surprised he's not quickly calling this, Mike. Well... I'm surprised, too. He's got the top pair. There's not a flush out there. There is a straight draw, but his opponents in the blind could have anything. Tell you one thing I know for sure. George does not riffle his chips all that well. Usually we're accustomed to players really being able to maneuver their chips. And George is looking like amateur hour here. <laughs> <laughs> he looks pretty serious to me, though. Come on. Look at Eric. He's trying to be calm, cool, and collected. He knows he's in there on a steal. It's a semi-bluff because he does have a straight draw. But believe me, he would like to pick it up right here. He doesn't want George raising him. He doesn't want anything funny happening here. You're going to put me to sleep, George. <laughs> You're very young to sleep now. When we die, we sleep forever. <laughs> I don't know. You're working awfully hard to do it. What the heck does that mean? I think he's talking about fishes going to sleep. And okay, don't sleep. And what's happening is he puts his hand to bed, and Eric is going to pick up the pot here with a six and a three. Nice bet there by Eric Lingren to win that pot, and I am very surprised that George would lay down the top pair there, Vince, i got to tell you. I am too, but I'll tell you one thing. i got a chill running down my spine right now. I think he's told me that he, he wants me to sleep with the fishes or something. <laughs> Well, George has got a look on him, didn't he? I think Eric's got to reevaluate who he's beaten down there. <laughs> we don't know this guy all that well. And uh, he's you a know? nice guy. But yes, but I'm Plays sure he is. Poker, but, but he's very intense here. He's, he's, you know, he's scaring a lot of people here. <laughs> you guys are friends. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Eric is just chatting it up, having a great time. And why not? He's a young American in Paris, playing poker for a lot of money. And I'll tell you, Vince, Eric Lingren is a great young poker player. We're going to see a lot more of him on the World Poker Tour. Eric Lingren, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm 
I'm just gonna pick my spots. You won't see me getting too crazy early on. But then if we eliminate a couple players, I think I'll really start moving some chips. He dog that he is part of the young rat pack of poker players in the United States, all young. They hang out together and they study a lot together. And here he is playing great poker here today. The World Poker Tour will continue from the Aviation Club de France in a moment. Grand Prix de Paris. Back to the action. Let's not forget the winner of this will make 357,000 euros, which is about almost close to 400,000 American cash. Here we go again. Back on the Greek tycoon, George. This time he's got a king three off suit. He passes. Eric goes out with a 9 3. David. On the button, in good position, picks up a nice hand, king, jack of clubs. He's going to raise it, makes it 9,000 to go. David raises. Look at Jamie in the small blind, has picked up ace, jack of diamonds, a very nice hand. It's a strong hand, let's see what he does with it. He's just calling, he does just not re-raise it, he doesn't take the lead. Very interesting. And now it's six more thousand to the big blind, Jan. He's only got a nine and a six, but there's a lot of money sitting out there. He's going to take a look at a flop here. He's got an abysmal hand. He's got nine, six off suit, but you're right. doesn't cost him a lot more. Why not take a shot? Three-way action. Here comes the flop. Six, nine, eight, all of clubs. A bingo for David Benjamin here. Oh, this is a train wreck waiting to happen. Jamie checks. And Jan checks it. Both players check. Now it's up to David. Now David's flopped the flush. How does he want to play this? Look, he's looking back at his cards again. Oh, he's doing a little Marlon Brando here, yeah. a little acting job. Wants to make sure he has that flush, maybe. He's got to be so excited. You flop a flush. How to play it? Well, there's about 30,000 sitting in the pot right now. 14. He's going to bet 14,000. Pretty small bet for the size of the pot. Wants players to play, obviously. 14, sorry. Jamie's got a junk hand at this point. He's not going to play. Jamie's and now it's back on Jan. Well, Jan's got be, two pair. He could be headed for Whitewater here. He's got to think the two pair are the best hand, Vince. Well, let's talk about the psychology of that. Of course he does. He doesn't figure the other guy flopped the flush because he was in the best position to raise before the flop, which is exactly what he did. So you got to think you're in front. In the meantime... The French national anthem is going off in David's head, and he's trying to pretend like it's not. And Jan's going to raise it. Rightfully so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, remember, Jan does have two pair. He could make a full house here. He's bet 51,000. He re-raises David 37,000 more. He's a raise. You know, you know, you're saying, well, with, you know, this guy could have the ace high flush, but that's very highly unlikely. David knows that. He's ecstatic inside. Well, we know he's going to play. It's a matter, is he going to call, raise? What's he going to do here, Vince? He's got to love it, but... And don't forget, you can just fling it all in and go all in. Remember, there are a couple hands that could beat him now. An ace high flush would beat him, and a straight flush would beat him. And he's so got to think also maybe... So he doesn't have a mortal sense lock, but on the other hand, you got to love your hand here when you flop a flush and a king. No, but look flush. at this. You're right, Mike. He's just, he just going to call. We're going to see a fourth street. The fourth street. And an eight comes off. Right. Now, Vince, this is going to be a card that neither player is going to like. Well, it did pair the board. Yawn checks it. This killed Yawn's two pair. And David's scared of it also. David checks right behind him. Wow. Last card coming up. Is the river card? Now the five of diamonds comes up there. Makes a straight possibility. Jan checks it. Of course, that doesn't scare David. Jan checks. 
Well, David's thinking, you know what, if he is better than me, is he really going to check it twice? Now look at this. He bets 30000 There's over 130000 in the pot. He bet 30000 and Jan paid him off. So he bled him there at the river by milking him for 30000 more by making that small bet with a flush. Nice little bet there. Jan paid him off in hopes that he just had an ace of clubs there, a dry ace, as we say. Turns out he had the flush. He wins the pot. And Jan Bubli took a hit there. Yes, he did. The dentist had someone bleed him for once. What a turnaround. Very interesting, but the chip leader just increases his stack. You're a monster now. Mike Vince, how do you think this year's tournament compares to the last time we were here? Well, this year we don't have Tony G, you know, the, the trash-talking Australian, the Osama bin Laden of the poker world, the poker terrorist. Well, he was fun to watch, but you guys know there's a certain etiquette that you have to keep, even in a poker game. Who says? We've got a quick refresher course on how to mind your manners at the table. On this week's Poker Corner, brought to you by Anheuser World Select. You poke just like that? It's a flash! Occasionally in a poker game, you'll run across players who cross the line. You move, you say yes, I call. Players who forget there is a line, and at least one player who never knew there was a line in the first butcher place. Back there. here we go. Oh. Beat the butcher. I think the best player have a really, really good control on themselves. With competition fierce and big money on the line, players can forget I'm their coming, manners. But all time. you really need to know about how to act at the poker table, you already learned in kindergarten. One, don't touch other people's things, no. especially their cards. That's what I know. <laughs> they did it to me, so don't worry. Two, don't throw things. You need to be absolutely 100% professional and win or lose. And finally, above all else, don't be a sore loser. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Because it's no fun at all playing with someone who's a bad loser. The ones that act up, I don't feel sorry for them at all. But there is one rule from kindergarten you don't need to follow in a high-stakes poker game. You most definitely do not have to share. I knew it was gonna work. <laughs> all right, back in action. Okay, it's going to be on Eric. He looks at a 10-4 this time. Not going to call. Chip leader David has an ace-9. Everything going his way so far, so he raises again. Jamie's out. Jan is going out. Now we're up to George. George looks at a king-jack and a big blind here. Kojak. Yes, he does. Hold on the button. Yeah. Hold. I go all in. He goes all in. Oh, say it ain't so, George. George what are you done doing? It. He's moved all in with his King Jack right here. I think I can pass, no matter what I have. Now, he was definitely heated up a few hands ago. Oh, Looks like he has not simmered down yet. Well, it's only going to cost David about 30 more thousand. He's got over half a million in chips. So he is going to call it. Oh, he very casually calls it. We're going to see a showdown here, Mike. Well, Vince, after three days, it's all come down to this for George. Well, George, 96 players started. We are down to five, and George, the Greek tycoon, is overheating like a cheap foreign car with a king jack against ace nine. Whole tournament could ride on the turn of this next card. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I went from being the chip leader, the man, <laughs> on my way to winning, <laughs> to out. But I was happy with my play. I don't feel like I made a mistake. So. Yeah. You gotta look at the positive side, I guess, when you have no choice. Welcome back, everyone. Vince, right now we've got George the Greek walking the high wire with no net below. Will he survive? Well, he's in a lot of trouble. George the Greek, King Jack against Ace Nine. Will the Greek gods be good to him, or will he be sleeping with the fishes? Here comes the flop. Uh, Jack's the first card off. It comes Jack Six Nine. So far, George has done it. He is out front. The gods have been good to him so far with the Jacks. Here comes Fourth Street. A three comes off. Three of diamond. George still in the lead with David not liking this. He's going to need a nine or an ace. Otherwise, George is going to double up and stay alive. Let's watch the last card. It's a three. George does it. Bingo! Bingo! Back to the battle. To 
the bottle, did he say, or the no, battle? No, he said the battle. Okay. George is not a drinker. Uh, I'm sorry. He's a health nut, George is. Very excited health nut. Nine lives, George. What a nice stab there. George is going to hang around. Well done, George. Yes, he is. George Padavoyasakis, otherwise known as the Greek tycoon, grew up in Greece, a very passionate poker player, used to work in real estate. Been working since he was 11 years old. My name is George Padavoyasakis from the island of Crete. If I have to choose two ways to have real pleasure, one way is to be with my wife, and the other pleasure is to play poker. George the Greek picks up his first pot. How do you pronounce that last name, Vince? Uh, never mind. <laughs> it's uh, and we're calling him George the Greek. Yatsky. <laughs> sounds like some type of Hebrew board game. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> next hand being dealt. It's going to be on the young Englishman Jamie Posner to act first. He's got an A7, Mike. Let's see how he plays it. He's been relatively quiet today. Hasn't been involved in any pots at all. Any folds here? Jan is going away. George is not going to play. Now we're down to the Battle of the Blinds. You got Eric with 10 7 of hearts. Eric calls out of the small blind. You know, maybe playing it strong normally. Usually you have a big hand. David with 10 6 off suit. <laughs> Look at them. And David says, okay, let's have a flop here. Lots of very nice social chit chat, a little laughs between the two. Six, six. Look at this flop, ten nine six. Oh man, Mike, this is a monster for David. He's uh -oh. flopped two pair to well, Eric's one pair. I will tell you, Eric's got to be careful here. He's going to be going over the dam in a barrel. He leads out in bets. He has the top pair in a straight draw, but his opponent has top and bottom and pair, and is going to raise him right here. He makes it twenty-eight thousand to go. Total twenty-eight thousand. Look at Eric stare at him. He flicks his eyes over there. Look. Eric is in a predicament here. We see it because of the WPT cams, but if you're sitting in Eric's seat right now, you've got the top pair in a straight draw. You don't know if this guy's making a move on you. You don't know if your tens are good. It's a tough decision Eric is faced with right now, Vince, I'm telling you. Crazy thing about this is David is just stumbling around and hits two pair in the flop. He's going to call it. Yes, he is. He, he pitches out a $10,000 plaque and puts in 10 $1,000 chips. This could be it. This is 4th Street coming up. So here we go to 4th Street. And right now, That's Eric is in the cookie Street. jar. He's going to have to catch a 7, 8, or a 9 here to get out of this trap he's in. And a 5 comes off. 5 of spades. Eric checks. Eric checks. David, this card, he knows that's not going to hurt him. Well, that's a great card for David's hand, that's for sure. Because it doesn't help anybody. He thinks if his opponent has a draw, that card's not going to help him any. We know he's going to bet. It's just a matter of how much. 60. It's a good number. 60,000, he says. I love the body language with that, too, with the finger going up. You know, very coyly. 60. Soissons. Notice that he said that that's a good number. Yeah, like not, that's why he chose that. I'm not so sure Eric thinks so. Right now, Eric is heading for white water here. What you got, David? I think this is the end of a beautiful friendship right here. She don't repeat it if I tell you? <laughs> He's trying to talk to him. He's trying to get information out. What am I going to do? I think it's what the round. What do you want me to do? It's the round of the good pots. Big pots are on here. <laughs> Big pots around here. Now look, see that, in my view, that was a tell, Vince. He's too confident about what he's got here. Now, now I'm thinking about something. Maybe you called to trap me because I always raise on my big blind. It might have another pair. I get scared suddenly. Oh, he's going with a double talk now, Mike. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a pretty tough spot. You want me to call? Well, here we are in Paris on the World Poker Tour. I mean, you have Jack Queen come a king, maybe we chop. He said if you have Jack Queen and call, maybe we'll <laughs> split the pot if a king comes up. You know, I don't want to chop it. Look at this. He would like Eric to think he's got Jack Queen. We've done a lot of tournaments. I don't think I've heard this much baloney come out of one player <laughs> in one particular <laughs> hand ever. I'm telling you, 
Eric Langren is faced with a very difficult decision right here. You have top pair, a straight draw. You're up against a gambling style player. What do you do right now? One false move, you're out. You're scaling the Eiffel Tower with Lee Salem. You don't want to make this mistake. Look, he's going to call this. Well, he's getting his chips out. He's yes. heading for the waterfall here, Vince. Eric, don't do it. Can you show me if I fold? These guys are so cozy, I'm surprised they're not holding hands. Oh, what a decision here for Eric. You can hear a pin drop out here. This is the tournament for him. But he's not going to do he it, He folds. Mike. A great lay down there by Eric. If I show a three, you give me an extra thousand. You show me a three. <laughs> Listen. I'll fall on my chair. I don't want you to fall. <laughs> If you showed me a three, I'll fall out of my chair. That's because he would absolutely have to have the best hand if he showed him a three. Obviously, we know he didn't have it. He had two pair. A great lay down by Eric Langman there. That was artistry at work. <laughs> David is going to take that pot, though, and that is a great lay down by Eric. Well, Vince, the price of poker is going up again. As you know, in tournament poker, the blinds and antis continue to increase all the way to the end of the tournament. Right now, we have antis at 500. Small blind is 3,000. The big blind is 6,000. And here we go. It's going to be on Jan Boubli. Jan's going to go out with 9 8. Now, George. I call. George just calls. He's got two fours. He's on the short stack. I'm a little surprised he didn't raise there, Vince. Just go ahead and move it all in. Eric's out. Eric folds. David Benjamin with the seven deuce of clubs. He's going to splash around. He's going to call out of the small blind. Jamie Potion has got an A6. Now he's been chucking his aces lately. Let's see yeah, if he does it he's again. seen everybody limp in here. 30,000 he makes it with Take the ace hand. Well done. Doesn't want anybody to see a chip flop. I go in. But look at this. George says, I'm going all in. He bangs his chips on the table. I was waiting for that. Angry George is going to go all in there. George says, I was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. It's like he's got a big monster. He's got two fours is all, but still. Hey, look, he's mad as hell. He's not going to take it anymore. Uh, that's the look he has. David has gone out. Now, Jamie, it's only going to cost Jamie another 30000 to call. There's about 100,000 sitting out there. So Jamie has opened the door to put himself in a trap, but he doesn't realize he's going to be about even money to win this pot. Jamie's just saying to himself now, why didn't I just throw away another ace? And George, with a tight smile on his face, very tight lip smile, seems to be enjoying this. Now George would like him to throw his hand away. I can assure you of that. You know, I know his opponent's got at least two overcards, so it's going to be a race situation. So George would be very happy to take it right here. Jamie cannot make up his mind here. Well, he's getting over three to one value on his chips. You know, so it's a pretty tough lay down, I think, when you're not going to get broke even if you lose the pot here. You could take a man out. You could pick up another 130,000. Let's go. He does it. He does call it. He's going to call it after all. He knows he's gambling here, but he's going to be happy to see the position he's in. It's A6 versus two fours. So Jamie likes seeing that. He stands up. Well, he's got a little shot. He's still a little bit of a dog, though. Well, but he's got to feel good about his chances. He wouldn't think he had two overcards with an ace and a six, I can tell you. All right, here, here comes go. the flop. Can George stay alive and do it again? Five, flop comes nine, five, three. So far, George is in the lead. George is going to like this so far. Here we go with Fourth Street. Well, he's going to dodge an ace or a six or two runners that make a straight. Can he do it? He's done it so far. King comes off. Right now, Jamie is going to have to have an ace or a six. Otherwise, George is going to double up. Last card coming up, Mike. It's a ten. He's done it. He pounds the table. The island of Crete. The island of Crete. Island of Crete. Hey. The island of Crete. There it is. Well, we know where you're from now. Security. <laughs> yes. 
Get security, okay? He's, he's starting to tap Never out. Never dies. Never die. He is amazing to watch. Every time yes. he goes all in, he wins the pot. George the Greek is alive and well here on the World Poker Tour. We'll be right back with more from Paris right after this. I think in order to be a successful poker player, you have to play for the love of the game and not so much the money. Once you start playing for the love of the game, then you'll be able to take your game to the next level. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. Welcome back to Paris for the World Poker Tour. And Vince, this truly is an international championship. Well, Mike, what's interesting is we have players from four different continents here going after the title. But not only that, they get the $25,000 seat at the World Poker Tour Championships. So there's a lot at stake. You're right. A lot at stake. David still maintains a nice chip lead over the field here. He is in real good shape with about a half million in chips. Jan in second place with about 170000 Here we go. It's going to be on Eric right now. He's got 7-3. Not going to call. David going out also. Jamie's going to go out with Jack-8. Now with John Bublé, he's got a 7-deuce offsuit known as the worst hand in poker. Really? You can't start with the worst hand, yet he is raising the pot yes. right here with the worst hand you can have. Well, he's taking a shot. He knows he only has George left, the big blind. This is the total from this model. George has got a 10-4. Only one. George lays it down. Jan picks up the hand, so right there, he looks like a Grand Prix driver by changing gears and raising with the worst hand possible. It shows you the different tactics involved in tournament poker. So Jan Boubli, the dentist from France. Legrand is going to pick up that nice pot. What a great name to have people call you. You know, the big one, the grand one. He is considered the top tournament player in France. My name is Boubli Yann. My origin is from Tunisia. Poker is almost a supernatural feeling. It's something exceptional. You cannot find that in any other game of cards. A very interesting, diverse group from all around the world here at this final table. First to act is going to be David, the chip leader, David Benjamin from France. This time, Mike, he's got Jack-10 offsuit. And he opts to fold. But Mr. Englishman, Jamie Posner, but he's caught big slick ace-king. He's on the short stack here. He has less than 10 times the big blind, so, you know, how to play this hand. We know he's going to play it. <clears throat> oh, look at he's coughing into his hands there, pretending like he's not excited. It's just a matter of what he's going to bet. He's getting it all together now, looks like. He's stacking it all up there. He's just putting it like a big boat. Oh, yeah, just do it full frontal. He's sailing bet. right to the center of the sea here with there all he his goes. chips. Why not? You got big slick ace king. Jan passes. Jan pass. And George passes. George pass. Eric's got a pair of nines. He's got a real hand also. Count it, please. And Eric says count it. So they undid the mast on the boat. They're counting it down. Look at this nines against ace king. Now remember, Eric's in the big blind. He's got 6,000 out there. Hey, look at you, James. 57 and 300. 51,000 more. Huh? It's going to cost him another 51,000 to call. Now Eric only has about 120,000 himself, so it's about half his stack here. But he has two nines. That's a pretty big hand. He knows Jamie's on the short stack. Might be a desperate man. 
I'd be surprised if he laid this down, Vince, but he might. That'd be a very tough lay down to make. Well, Jamie's played very conservative today. Look at Jamie looking at him. Do you know who I am? I'm Jamie Bond. <laughs> Jamie. Nervous wreck sitting over there. Going all in. Well, see, if I was Jamie here, I'd actually want him to call me in this spot. I'd try to, I'd want to double up in this spot if I was him. Now, you'd be a little bit of a dog here, but... Well, you may not win the pot, but you got to think you got the best hand if it takes a guy this long to call. You know, you have to double up to get back in the hunt. you got to win some pots to win the tournament. I mean, here's a case that I would want the guy to call me if I was Jamie. What do you want me to do? Eric loves to talk to his fellow players, keep a conversation going, tries to get information off them. I'll tell you, it seems like Eric's always faced with a borderline decision to play or not to play here. Mm. Scamble. He's going for it. He's done it. Why not? There All you right. go. Really? Here we go. It's two nines versus ace-king. Ace -king it's the race king. situation where the two over cards against the pair. The pair is a slight favorite here. That's not what you hope. That's not what I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie up from his seat. Well, he knows this is it for him. He's got to win this pot or he's on the rail. I'm going to get lucky. Eric before has been very, very solid, but here comes the flop. Let's see the flop. And Jamie's got lucky six. with the ace, ace so far. Jack six. He's hit it. Now, right now, Eric is going to have to catch a nine. Otherwise, Jamie is going to double up. Here's fourth street. There's a four. There's a four. Here comes the miracle. Jamie's still in front. Can he survive fifth street? He does it. He shoots his arms up. He can sit back down. He is doubled up. Nice hit. Take a deep breath. Take a glass of water. Bad call. No, that's a good call. That's so the young Englishman, Jamie Posner, hitting the ace on the flop. It's going to pay off for him. They asked Jamie Posner, do you consider yourself a gambler? He said, no, I don't consider myself a gambler. I'm a huge investment risk taker. I love that. I mean, I suppose it really started at university. I won enormous amounts of money relative to how much money I had at the time. I actually had two degrees. I did first degree economics and second degree. It was a master's in computer science in London. Years before his career as an investment banker, 25-year-old British player Jamie Posner knew he had a knack for numbers. I describe myself as a strategic risk taker. I think there's a massive distinction between a gambler and uh, someone who understands the odds. I think that my mathematical side and my strategic side are my strong points. So I think very much from the analytical side of the game. I adore it because I, you know, I engage my brain. It's a lot of deep thinking. And uh, to be honest, I love it. It's absolutely fantastic. That was a nice, aggressive play by Jamie to pick up that pot fence. Got to give him credit. A bold move there. Very well done. Okay, we're going to take a little quick break. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton in Paris. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. You just said 600 was going to be okay, too. Everything is fine now. Exclusive Aviation Club de France for the Grand Prix de Paris. With conditions treacherous in this international tour de force, California cash game vet Lee Salem crashed early, taking an all-in stand against French pro David Benjamin. Queens again. David leads the pack by a wide margin, but Parisian compatriot Jan Legrand continues to close the gap, attempting to leave his rivals in the dust. All-American tournament pro Eric Lindgren has chosen his spots wisely, going pedal to the metal for the pot against George the Greek. The island of Crete. But with George the Greek, the island of Crete never dies as he doubles up on both David and British banker Jamie Posner. Jamie maintains a moderate approach, seeking the best return on his investment. But with five rivals remaining, the Grand Prix de Paris is still anyone's race. Welcome back to the Aviation Club in Paris, France, on the World Poker Tour. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. It's good to have you with us. All right. 
back in action. This time it's going to be on the dentist once again, Mr. Legrand, Jan Boublé. This time he's acquired seven four off suit. He Jan folds. Bass. George picks up a jack eight off suit. He folds. George Bass. Now, Eric Lindgren, the American Idol, has got a real hand. He's got a pair of fours. Holland. He's on the short stack here. He's gone all in. So the E dog is barking with his two fours. Yes, he is. And David's quickly folded. David folds in the small blind. Jamie has a 10 3. He folds. Eric, yeah, Eric picks up the pot. And he's trying to get back in the hunt here. I like that, Vince, the American Idol. Maybe we should forget about the E dog. And call him the American Idol. He might get a bigger fan club. Well, he's got it all going. I mean, he's a, he's a great poker player, a smart kid, an athlete. I mean, he's the kind of guy that looks like he should be walking around with his Letterman jacket on all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of guy he is. I'm sure he did when he was younger. I grew up in a small town in northeastern California, Bernie, California, a town of 3,000 people. 26-year-old Eric Lindgren may have started out small town, but like the poker pack he runs with, he's poised to hit it big. I always want to win. I <laughs> take no mercy. I'm very competitive, and this gives an outlet that I can exercise that in. These are guys who think that they can run the world in poker. Of the pack? We're friends. In other words, everybody's out to win. When you get farther and you make the show and you win one, it's like, yeah, OK, I got one locked up. Now, when are you going to get it? Come on, kid. WPT three-timer Phil Ivey has a nickname for his poker pal and Grand Prix hopeful. Bubble Boy. Yeah, I just told him that he finds a way to get on every show, but he's not actually in the poker game. That's just how it is. So I think he wanted to prove me different this time. This may be his first time making the final table of a WPT event, but Eric has years of tournament experience under his belt. I really feel that's my advantage. I've probably played more tournaments than all the guys, at least that I know of. It's all on you out there. There's nobody you can rely on. You know, you have to call on your experiences, and I feel like I'm pretty experienced. And though he's traveled the poker circuit for years, it's this young American's first time in Paris. So how does it compare with Bernie, California? There's a few more girls here. <laughs> well, that's Eric picks up that little pot, but right now the blinds and Annie's are going up again. He's still on the short stack. Still got a ways to go. All of them have a ways to go to catch David Benjamin right now. Eric still has hope. He's been zigging and zagging all afternoon playing superb poker. Can he come back? Our last American in the final five here. And it's going to be on Eric to make a decision first. He's got 8-6 this time. Look at this. He's going all in. What's he doing here? In first position with an 8-6 offsuit. You talk about taking a stab, but look at this is a bad time because David has ace queen. He's got to call it. Eric realizes what he's done now. And he's saying to himself, Take me back, Mr. Wizard. And now look at this. Jamie Posner also has ace queen. And now he's faced with a decision. He's queen, but he's not going to call it. And he folds. He gets Jamie out of the way. Jan Boublé has an ace eight, and he's quickly not going to call. George has got king three of hearts. I can't imagine he's going to call an all-in bet and a call with a king of three. He's going to fold, so they're all getting out of David's way. They're going to let David take on the American. Can Eric get lucky and win this pot? This is... Ace Queen versus eight six. Well, I tell you, he's embarrassed to turn that one over. He took a stab. He does not like his hand. Eric, I have one thing to say to you. We are not in Kansas anymore. Here comes the flop. <laughs> and there it is. It comes Ace Jack oh. Eight. Jack Eight. Now, David has done it so far. He's hit his aces. Well, Eric has hit two eight, so he can win yes, the pot with an eight or six. That's what he's going to have to Here have. Here comes Fourth Street. And now with the Jack coming off, a six won't do him any good. Now he's going to have to catch an eight. Otherwise, he is going to be our fifth-place finisher. Eight or a miss deal. Eight on ace of spades. Well, there's one eight left in the deck. Can he catch it? Oh, it he doesn't seven. do it. Eric will be our fifth oh, that's going to do it, Eric. Eric Lindgren, our fifth-place finisher here today. Oh, it was a great effort.
Yeah, don't feel too bad for him, Vince. It was his first trip to Europe, yet he's taken home over $60,000, and we will see him back on the World Poker Tour again. He is one tough customer. More World Poker Tour action coming up from the exclusive <laughs> Aviation Club in Paris, France. Stay tuned. We are down to four fantastic players here in Paris. Well, there's only going to be one survivor, Vince. That's the way it works on the World Poker Tour. They play until one guy has all the chips. Let's go check those chip standings right now. And Vince, with the elimination of Eric Lindgren, the Americans are gone. We're not only down to the final four, we're down to the four and four. That's who's left. One Englishman, one Greek, and two Frenchmen. And, of course, David Benjamin is in front. We're playing No Limit Hold'em. Anything can happen. We've seen turnarounds before. It's going to be on Beyond. Now this time he's picked up a, a wired pair of threes. How's he going to play this? Actions on the end. He raises. He's raising it. Yes, he is. 18. 18,000. Little massage raise. From Ian. Now on George with a queen five. George has been going up against Jan too many times today. He's he going to throw that one away. David Benjamin. He's got Dolly Parton nine to five. <laughs> and he folds. Going to go out. And Jamie has gone all in here. Look at this. He's got the king ten. He's on the short stack. He's a desperate man. Doing desperate things. He's opted to move all in right here, right now. Well, he's a little bit of a dog. And if he doesn't win this, he's going to be taking that channel right back to London real quick. Well, that's going to cost Jan another 21000 to call. I'm sure he's going to. He is. So once again, we have the pair versus the two overcards. Yes, we're down to fourth, Mike. We might be down to three. Let's see what happens. Pair of threes against King-10. And Jamie gets up. He's going to get lucky here to stay alive in this tournament, or he'll be our fourth-place finisher. He has King-10 versus the two threes. Here comes the flop. He got luckier earlier. Comes four eight seven. Not so far, he's not. That's no help at all to Jamie so far. The two threes are still good. Now notice Jean Boublé here. He looks like a French statue. He's just frozen. He's not going to move until this pot is pushed to him. Jan in front with a pair of threes. Jamie looking sick right now. Can he get an outdraw here? Here we go. Oh, no help there. It's a deuce. Right now, Jamie Posner is going to have to catch a king or a ten, or he will be our fourth place finisher. I check. <laughs> Say your prayers. River. Oh. It's a jack. Now, Jan breathes easier. Jamie heads for the door. He has been eliminated. Yes, he has. He goes out in fourth place. He will be taking home 80,500 euros. That is a great effort by Jamie Posner. So, Jamie, it got really hard after David got all of those chips. Yeah, I mean, I dwindled down to virtually no chips at all. Um, you know, I gave him my best shot at the end with King-10. It was pretty much an even shot. Uh, it went against me, but that's just the way it goes. You know, that's poker. And uh, I'm sure I'll be back here next year to give it the best shot again. I object to continue. We are in Paris, and I'm in the middle of two French players. It's unfair. Well, I'll tell you something. George has started... He's starting to ramble again. We have to stop again. the game and uh, divide the money in three pieces. <laughs> Till the last drop of my blood. Oh no, he's getting morbid now. Did you hear that? He's fighting to the last drop of his blood, Vance. You I, heard him. I like the spirit. So he is going to battle him. Right back on George. He's looking very excited. Looked over his shoulder like someone's trying to take a peek at his hand. Well, he's picked up a big hand. He's got a king jack here. Yes, he has. A three-handed game. Remember, he's on the short stack. What's he going to do with it? All in. All in. He's, he's going all, all in. in. He's done it. I don't blame him at all for going all in here. Take a shot, George. 
And look at this. David Benjamin has oh. picked up an ace jack. And he's going to call it. And he calls it, of course. Yeah, Bublé going to go out with jack four. Look at the spot George has got himself into now. This he could be it. 57. 57,000. David's got to love this. Big favorite here to win this. Right now, the Frenchman has ace jack, David Benjamin, and George the Greek has king jack. George is in real bad shape right here. He's going to have to get very lucky to stay alive in this tournament. Obviously, because you don't want to match the jack. you got to hit a king. Let's see if he does it. Papa's not going to help him yet. 10 4 with two diamonds. That's no help to George. George is going to have to have a king or two runners to make a straight, or he's going to be out of here in third place. David is in front so far. Can it hold up? Here comes fourth street. Oh, the king oh, comes king. off for George. But now notice, that's another diamond on the board. David has a jack of diamonds, so a diamond would win it for him, a queen would win it for him, or an ace would win it for him. Diamond forever. Thank you. Oh, the Frenchmen in the background say diamonds are forever. You show your feelings. They know a diamond would win for him. forever. Crete forever. George does it. Diamond forever. Crete forever. There you go. <laughs> George says, take those diamonds out of here. Diamond forever, huh? Crete forever. This is Crete here. Crete forever. Diamond forever, huh? He doesn't have a big fan club here. Let's face it. I mean, these guys are rooting for the French guys. Crete forever. <laughs> As we've seen here in Paris, the game of poker draws players from all corners of the globe. Earlier, I had a chance to speak with George Padovoisakis, and I discovered that he's a player who's truly traveled further than most. I'm almost 40 years married, and I have three daughters and two grand. Two grandsons. Family is the most important thing in life. I was born very poor, homeless. So for what I have achieved, yes, I'm, I'm blessed by God. What I'm telling you comes from my heart. He may be humble, but don't mistake the mild manner. Share a table with George the Greek, and he may just break more than plates. Yes! Poker, it's a battle. You have to fight. That's me from the island of Crete. But in a game that requires emotions to be in check, is it possible for George the Greek to be too passionate? No, I don't accept that. I don't accept that. It does definitely affect his play. In poker, it's better to be calm and relaxed, and you can see things better. I was born in the island of honor. If you say something, you have to do it, no matter if it will cost you. So if the right word is passion, then I accept. Well, here we go right back in the next hand. This time it's going to be on David, who looks like he just got an ulcer from that last hand. And this time he's got a pair of fives, Mike. Yeah, he's picked up two fives on the button. Nice hand in a three-handed game, and he's going to raise it. He comes in for 24,000. 24,000. Jean Boubli has seven, six of spades. And he folds. Yeah, he folds. Yes, he does. Up to George, who's got a pair of tens this time. Mm, monster hand, the big blind. George, you're doing it. I go all in. He goes all in. Oh, oh bravo. Great forever. Great, great forever, Mike. And now look at David Benjamin. Great this forever. is going to cost him another 100000 if he wants to play this pot. David Benjamin looks like the Temple of Doom all of a sudden. Well, I'll tell you, if he calls and loses this pot... I mean, it'll be a quarter million dollars that goes into George's stack here. What a nice little roll for George. Now notice how confident George looked when he was banging those chips in. That's what Dave is looking at right now. Well, David's starting to look like he's being tortured. You know, David's got two fives there. He's a commanding chip leader. What a turn of events here, happening so quickly. Does he want to gamble with the two fives here? The way George looks, you know, what to do, what to do. We know he's got way the worst hand, but assuming George would just have two over cards, it would be like even money who would win this pot. That's what David's thinking about, but 
You also saw how confident George was slamming that money in the pot. Look, he shows the fives and lays them down. That's a tremendous lay down by what David. What a great lay down right there by David Benjamin. I tell on you, Vince, most guys would call with two fives there. In a flash. George made a mistake there by getting too overconfident, banging those chips on the table. It was a tell in David's mind that he had a powerful hand. He indeed did have good lay down, good read by David Benjamin right there. That shows me he's a great player. We are seeing some great action here. We'll be right back with more action from Paris here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the Aviation Club in Paris, France, on the World Poker Tour. I'm Vince Van Patten. And I'm Mike Sexton. It's good to have you with us. And don't forget, George was hanging by a thread just about an hour ago, and he has come back in a big way. Well, David Benjamin still has a nice chip lead over both his opponents, but he's sort of on the downward slide, and they're on the uphill slide, so they're going the right direction. He's heading the wrong way right now, but still has a commanding chip lead. Back on the chip leader, David Benjamin. He's looking at 6-3 now. Not going to play. Here's Jean Boublé picking up a pair of fours against the blind. So we know he's going to play, just a matter of what he's going to do. Oh, he's going to raise. Dentist going to make a raise here. Let's see how much it is. 33,000. 33,000 he makes it. George takes a squeeze at a jack ten he sees. All in. All in he goes with a jack ten off suit. Brave raise here by George. 121,000. Right back at Jan Boublé. Well, now he has put Jan Boublé to the test right here. Oh, he's put him on the diving board. What a bold move by George right here. He's going to throw it away. He throws it away. And let's see if George shows him the hand. He does not. What a beautiful steal there. Well, that was a great move by George. And an interesting lay down by Jan Boublé right there. Well, Mike, it has been a great week here so far. And I'll tell you something. It's always so much fun, not just to come to Paris, but to also be able to hang out inside this amazing club. Oh, you're right, Vance. It's a treat for us to be here and for our audiences to get to peer inside the Aviation Club de France. Shauna Hyatt has more on just what it's like to be a member of the club. Unless you're looking for it, you could pass right by the Aviation Club of France. Old-fashioned discretion remains a hallmark here. Once inside, you enter a time machine. This is an elegant throwback to days gone by, when tuxedos were mandatory and the high rollers rubbed elbows with the rich and famous. We had and we still do have famous people that come in. Until poker started, uh, everybody was wearing suit and tie, except for the month of August where the tie could come off. By special permission of the French government, the World Poker Tour is the first outside organization to ever be granted access to the club, a record that goes back to its founding. The club started in 1908, created by aviators after the war to help orphans and widows of pilots. They started by doing gambling tables and raising money from that and helping them with their lives. The bartenders still mix their drinks with a flourish, and the restaurant serves up a five-star menu sure to satisfy the most discriminating palate. I think there is a rule. I can eat each plate of the customer. If I can't eat, I don't have. It's the rule of the game. When you serve somebody here, it's like for you. After the war in 1945, when it moved from across the street, it was only gambling, but nothing else more to do with aviation. We just kept the name and the pictures. But after all this time, people still call for flying lessons. You can get lessons here, but it's not going to be in flying, and it could get very expensive. All right. Back in action. 
Well, Mike, what I love to see here is George is taking control of this game. He is playing best at the table at this point. I love it that he takes that hand with Jack-10. Well, the action is on, George. Action on George. What's he going to do this time? He looks at an ace-7. Ace-7 of diamonds. All in. He goes all in. He goes oh, all there in. There he goes again. 130,000 he bets all in. But look at this. David Benjamin, he's hit a wall. He's oh. got the pair of aces. It's called. My days. Jan Folds. Unbelievable. The dream situation. Your opponent moves in, and you look down and find two aces in the big blind. This could spell disaster for George. Oh, you can't be in much better shape. It's two aces versus ace seven. You're probably a 90% favorite to win this pot. Remember last time we had ace jack against king jack. He lost. Here comes the flop. See the first three cards. Flop come. Eight, seven, four. Now he got a seven, but he needs an absolute miracle here. He's going to have to catch two running diamonds or another seven. Still in the lead. Let's see the fourth street. Hey, there's one diamond. He's got one diamond. He's oh, my a golly. A little chance. He can win this pot with a diamond or a seven. Right now he's a tremendous underdog. He's done it. Look, a seven. He did it again. I can't believe this. This is unbelievable. This, folks, is unbelievable. It's an ace seven against two aces. George the Greek has come back and defeated two aces here. You talk about legends happening. Before Unbelievable. Our very eyes. He's yeah. got Nick the Greek. Now we got George the Greek. He's, this is amazing. He's got more lives than a cat. I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. Oh, man. <laughs> what a tremendous outcome. Incredible, George. I killed the aces. <laughs> yes, you did. They are shocked outside. Well, I mean, that is unbelievable. Now, that does shock you. That's the fourth ace on the deck. Unbelievable. The man moves all in front. You pick up two aces. The dream scenario. He turns up his hand. He's got an ace in his hand and a seven, and you lose to this hand. That's an incredible beat. Now, you talk about fate. Unbelievable fate right there by George the Greek to win that pot, to double up right there. What a blow to David Benjamin and to Jean Boubli both, who now have a real tiger on their hands. We'll be right back with more from Paris here on the World Poker Tour. You've got to have control. You've got to have good money management. And you've got to try and stay ahead of the game. Stay ahead of the game. It means you've got to be one step ahead of your opponents. The boardroom table and the poker table. The only difference between them is a layer of felt. At these tables, we go all in fully leveraged. Reading risk and reward here isn't much different than reading it on a spreadsheet. We play because poker is like business, without the conference calls. The office may close at 6, but there's a game that's always open. We play at FullTillPoker.com. from Paris. Vance, we are getting down to it, and chip position plays a vital role in the game now. You're right, Mike, and let's go down there and check the chip tally right now. And right now, the match has tightened up considerably. Now, David still has a good chip lead with about 525,000. Jan believe with about 210, and George with about 230. Back into action here. David's going to make a nice raise with the king nine of hearts here. So David's been wounded, but it doesn't slow him down. He raises again. Jan Bubli going out with Queen 10. Jan folds in the small blind. And George has picked up a suited connector, 7-6 of diamonds. I call. And, and George calls. George calls. Right now, he thinks he's riding the, the Greek white horse there. Well, he knocked out a pair of aces last hand. Can he pull off another miracle here? Here comes the flop. This is an ace, a tray, and a deuce. Two hearts. David's got four hearts to his hand. The nut flush draw, as we say, is what he has. George, George doesn't has nothing. have much, no. George is first to speak. George, don't go crazy on us, though. Check. He checks. All in. 
David's going to fling all in. Quickly goes all in. It's Tappy in French. Now, there's no way George is going to call this. He's got a 7-6. He's just planning to make it look like he's got something for the next hand. It's like you argue a call in baseball. I guess he just wants to see David sweat. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so he's even going to torture him when he's not playing a pot. Look at this. Oh. Are those tears David wiping out of his oh, eyes up there? Oh, look at this. <laughs> Put the violin on. <laughs> he might need the visine here if he takes some more beats like them last two. Nice bet by David. He's going to take that pot. Well, that's the drama doesn't get much better than this on the World Poker Tour. This is amazing action here tonight in Paris. We're seeing great poker, Mike. We're talking about a $357,000 euro first prize back in action on our man Jan Bubli, the dentist from Paris. <coughs> and look at this. He picks up two kings. Oh, a monster. Menzies. Two Kokomos, <laughs> two Cowboys. 26,000. He is raising strong. 26,000. And it's on George the Greek now. George looks down. Now he finds an ace-10 of diamonds oh, that's here. a pretty strong hand, too. What is he going to do with this? All in. He's gone all in. Yes. George goes all in. Uh, David quickly George? folds his hand. I and Jan quickly calls. He can't he wait to get his money in the pot with the Kings. George taking the plunge here. This yeah. could be it. And once again, George has way the worst of it. Can he do this again, Vince, and stay alive? Oh, the water is rising around the island of Crete. Vince, i got to tell you, I get the feeling that George is trying to ride a bike up Mount Everest here. <sighs> Every time he gets his money in the pot, that's what it feels like to But me. he may get lucky. He still has that shot with the ace, of course. They're stacking up their chips. This could be it from a man from Greece. Well, this is a big pot right here. The dentist is putting the root canal to him. Pair of kings versus ace-10. George is about 26, 27,000 more. How many lives can George have? He's used up about eight of them so far. He is way up against it again right here. We are talking about the possible destiny of a future World Poker Tour champion. Still on the table, no matter what. Crete never dies. Crete never dies, oh, he says. That's the spirit, he George. The ace is coming. Here we go with the flop. It's an eight, a king, oh. and a seven. Well, he's going to have to catch two running cards to win this pot. Oh, Otherwise, this flop. Jan Bubli is going to double up. Here comes up. Fourth Street. Oh, wow. It's a four. He doesn't do it. Jan is going to double up here. Yes, he is. There's another king on the river. Oh, no. Four kings. Quads. Oh, not that he needed it. Tremendous. They call that hand poker over here. You get four of a kind. Well, that's a tough blow for George. He's not out, though. He's still got a few chips left, about 30,000 left. Yes, he does. Oh, to keep your composure under these kind of conditions. Well, with the blinds being 6 and 12,000, George is a desperate man. He's going to have to play about anything. Let's see what he has here. He's going to take the slow look once again. Got an ace deuce. He does have an ace. You know they're going in here. He's flinging it. Tappy. He moves in. Okay, says Tappy. David's got 310 offsuit. Now notice David called him with the 310 offsuit there because it's not much money. Jan will call as well. And look at this. Jan Bubli has an ace deuce, and he's also going to call. Well, he knows Jean Bubli is a top tournament player. They're most likely not going to bet each other unless one of them hits a big flop here. Here comes the flop. Flop comes three, queen. It comes three. queen, three, three. David has flopped three threes yes, in his hand. Yes, he has. This looks awful for George. Remember, they can create a side pot and bet. And he's doing that. David goes ahead and bet. He's bet 20,000. 20, Jan folds. Jan folds. He turns over the three threes. He shows a tree. Greek tycoon looking desperate here. Oh, no. He's got a hard draw, George does. <laughs> it's ace, deuce of hearts. He's flopped four hearts, so he's got to drive a six of spade. One heart. George is down to his last card again. Can he do it? See the river card? One heart. Can the miracle happen once again? No. no. Finally, they get rid of George. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
What a battle George put up, though. Third place finish of George Padovoyasakis from Crete. Well, he finally ran out of four-leaf clovers. It is over for George. He finishes in third place. He will take home 134,000 euros. Not a bad payday. Oh, what an interesting man. Well played today. He is going away. Third place finisher. And I can tell you, these guys are relieved to see him finally go out of there. He was resilient, Vince. He would never get out. Well, he gets a kiss from the wife. She's got to be very proud of her husband. And they're all patting him on the back. Look at that. Standing room crowd giving an ovation outside. Now we're down to two players, Mike. And Vince, this title is going to a Frenchman. Who will it be? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on the World Poker Tour. The players are back. We're going to see heads up action, Mike. Here comes the pot roast, Vince. Look at that. Well, Vince, we're down to it. And there's the custom on the World Poker Tour. We bring in the money, the cash money, over a million dollars, nearly one million euros. And it seems only a fitting, Vince, that they bring it out in a bread box here in France. It looks like they could have opened up a prime rib or something there. <laughs> For those of you in America who have never seen euros, it looks sort of like Monopoly money, as you'll see shortly. Voila! <laughs> Show me the money. There it is. Oh, you're right, Mike. Well, that'll make you smile anyway. Look at the pretty colors. Yeah. They got colored money over here. I like the colored money. You know, we have one color in our country, green, but I like these different colors. Oh, well, you get used to it, huh? You've won a few tournaments over oh, here yeah. yourself. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> Three days ago, Mike, 96 players. Three days later, two. Heads up. 357,000 euros to the winner. They're going at it. Well, as we're about to get underway, David Benjamin is starting out with about a two and a half to one chip lead over Jan Bubli. He has about 705,000. Jan Bubli with about 260,000. But I'll tell you, Vince, I love the way Jan Bubli plays poker. He is going to be a tough man to beat. Here we go. We're shuffled up, and now we're going to play. Hey, okay, Jan Bubli is on the button. And look at this, Mike Yon has picked up a huge hand. He's got ace-queen of spades suited. A monster hand plan heads up. And he, of course, is going up. He bets 41,000. 41,000. This is interesting because David all Benjamin also has a good hand. He's got ace-nine right now. All in. All in, he says. He's going all Jan in. Jan Bubli quickly calls him. Look at this. Fast and furious action. It's ace queen of spade for Jan. Ace nine versus David Benjamin. Jan Bubli is in a phenomenal position to double up and take the lead in this tournament, Vince. David's got to hate this. Off the first hand here, he's got to get lucky. Maybe he can hit a nine. Here comes the flop. Flop comes king. King, jack, ten. Bingo, voila. Magnifique for Jan Bubli. He makes the nut straight here. The best flop possible. What a monster flop. Total disaster for David. Here comes 4th Street. 4th Street is a 7. Oh, he's got to love this. What a flop for he's him. He's counting his chips. He knows he's going to win it. Last card. River card he does it. Yes, four. he does. A stunning turnaround here on the first hand. A heads up, Vince. Well, what's amazing, they did not play slow. They both just flung it all in. I mean, these guys are playing like they heard there's a Jerry Lewis movie yeah, playing down the street. John Bobli has doubled up right here and now has the chip lead in this tournament. The first time he's had it all week long. Well, you know what's interesting? David has taken his time throughout the whole tournament, and now he gets heads up, and he makes a rash decision. Well, that's a good point, Vance. Well, that is a tremendous turnaround. Jan's going to take the lead. Let's see if David can recover from that. Well, Vince, the price of poker is going up. The antes are going to be 2000 Small blind is going to be 8000 and the big blind has to put in 16000 well, The average stack right now is not quite a half a million apiece. So even with these large blinds and antis, Vince, they Action still got time to play here. Oh, they got a lot of room to play. Action is on Jan on the button. Here he picks up an ace-deuce. And he just calls. He, calls. he limps in on the button with ace-high. 
Well, look at this. Hallelujah. David Benjamin's hit the big one. Pair of aces in oh, his hand. Can you believe it? Two aces. It's a dream situation. His opponent's limped in, though. So let's see what he bets here. 25,000. 25, all in. Look at that. Yambo Blee goes all in. David says, I call. He has been trapped here. Unbelievable quick paced action by Yambo Blee. He has stubbed his toe here. <laughs> David dug the hole, put the branches and sticks over it, and he let Jan fall right into it. Aces against Ace Dude. Let's see a flop. Oh, the first card off is a deuce. Now you can imagine how David feels. He had two aces against Ace Seven and lost that pot. Can he lose with two aces against an ace deuce? <laughs> Look at this. Jan Boubli catches a deuce. He's their tournament title holder. Well, a Jack is coming up on 4th Street. The Jack comes up. He's got one more chance for the deuce. Here it comes. Oh, he's dodged it. David Benjamin is doubled up. And there's some poetic justice to that. Finally, his aces hold up there. Well done, David. Well, I must say I'm shocked by the play Jan Bubli made right there, Vince. He has fought and scraped and scratched and been on the short stack. Finally took a nearly two-to-one chip lead. And then in one swift motion, gave it all back to his opponent, where his opponent now has the lead again. Jan Bubli, what an error. Hmm. Well, David's got to love that. Taking a lead once again. And Jan Bubli, if he loses this tournament, I promise you, will not forget about that hand right there for a long, long time, Vince. Jan Bubli, David Benjamin. At first glance, these two poker savants have little in common. When I was very young, I played poker. When I was uh, 13, 14, I played poker. I started pretty late, actually. I tried the last few years to play poker for a living. One has a nickname. Et j'ai la chance de, de gagner souvent. Peut-être la raison pour laquelle on m'appelle le grand. The other. I think I'm still trying to find out <laughs> and search every day. One has a day job. Quand je vais travailler, je pense pas du tout au poker. The other works the night shift. Looking, I'm on holiday all, all year long, I think. <laughs> when you enjoy what you do, I think you're on holiday all the time. But there is one thing these two Frenchmen have in common. We're playing on the Champs-Élysées, you know. La plus belle avenue du monde. You see all lights and everybody enjoying life. Quoi demander de plus? Yes, national pride. And though they're both happy to keep the title on home turf, how do they feel about a battle among brothers? Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> I would like that. I want to win for myself. Shuffle up and deal. <laughs> Jan Boubli, the dentist, the Lagrande. If anybody can come back, he can. Here we go. It's going to be on David. He looks down at a pretty good hand. Ace 10. He comes in for 38,000. Jan Boubli's got a pair of eights. And he's going all in. Okay. David says, I call. This could be the showdown, Mike. Vance, we have the classic coin flip. Confrontation in poker. The two overcards versus the pair. Who is going to win this race? If Jan Boubli loses this race, he will be the runner-up. If David wins it, obviously he will be the champion. Look at this big smile from David. He knows he has to outdraw Jan here a little bit, but even if he loses this, he's still very much involved. He's still the chip leader, in fact. He's a chip leader, but not by a wide margin. Now the pair of eights is a slight favorite over an ace-10. Who will win the race to determine this title? Here we go with the flop, Mike. See the flop? There's three cards. It's a queen. Queen, deuce, deuce. And another deuce. Why not to tell With two diamonds. So far, the two eights of Jan Boubli are holding up. Oh, that would be a beautiful thing. He says, Jan. I wish it was Fini right now. That's right. David needs an ace or a ten or two running diamonds. And it's a diamond. It's a diamond. It's not an ace or a ten. Now, right now, David needs an ace, a ten, or a diamond. If he catches one of those three, he will be our champion. Last card coming up. The ace of diamonds. It's an ace of diamonds. Ace of diamonds. He hits the double bubble, the flush, the two aces. That David. is going to do it. David has won this title. And look at Jan Boubli. Very disappointed. Poor Jan. 
back to the drawing board. He's going to go back to that hand where he gave all those chips back to David. Well, maybe you're right, but I think David Benjamin is in a state of shock. Well, he's won a WPT title. He's going to be in the WPT championship. He's taken home over $400,000. Great day for David Benjamin. To our runner-up, John Boubli, and our champion in Paris, David Benjamin, congratulations. Terrific tournament, gentlemen. To Sean Hyatt, Vince Van Patten, the entire World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the World Poker Tour. Here we go, Mike. Here, try some of this. Bang, bang. Oh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. The real beauty of the World Poker Tour. You play until you go broke. All in. He says I'm all in. Oh, you're right, oh, you're right, Mike. Oh, you're right, oh, you're right, Mike. Whoa, he's all in. Can you believe this? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Oh. Gone. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Out of here. Bang. Gone. You're right, Mike. That's got to spin. Absolutely. He's all in. All in. Yeah, he's got to love that. Got to love, got to love, got to love that. Well, he says you may have wrote the book and you may be the godfather, but here's some of this. Bang. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's got to love that. Show tunes going off in your head. Going off in your head. Got to love that. Whoa. We look forward to seeing you next season on the World Poker Tour. Oh no, I wasn't ready.